Are you enjoying these videos? Try subscribing to the Alexander Arguez newsletter for more language learning content. Each month, receive musings from the professor's desk, hear student testimonials, and get book and video recommendations that will enhance your self-education. The link is in the description below. Please subscribe. You will not regret it. So yeah, uh, in our attempt to make good on our promise to ask the questions of the audience, we're, we're pulling some questions from the comments. And this one comes from Even Evenov, and it was well liked by, by the other people who viewed the video. So here it goes. Uh, he really wants to know, Professor, what the languages you found most difficult were and uh, and why they were the most difficult for you to learn. Oh, okay. Um, all right, let me start out by telling uh, an anecdote some people might know that I uh, hope makes me more relatable. Uh, the first language that I found difficult was the first language that I ever studied, a foreign language, that was French, that I started taking in school when I was 11. Uh, and I took, took all through junior high school and high school. And uh, I did well in it at first, but then I moved to a different school district and I was somehow behind and I kind of, you know, uh, didn't do quite so well in it as I did in other classes. And it was, you know, kind of a struggle. Uh, and when I got to college, I, after taking seven years of school French, I, I tested into second year college French. Um, and so in terms of that being difficult, I mean, taking seven years to get somewhere that you could really get in one year because French is objectively speaking for a native English speaker is a relatively easy language to learn. Um, so uh, once I got serious about that or, you know, was in a situation in, in school where I could take it seriously, I, I, I blossomed in it. I took off. So it was like treading water for seven years before I finally took off. And that's because I kind of took I was in a better, better learning environment and also taking more charge of, of the learning myself. But like I say, I, I think that the. Uh, that we can we can talk about languages that are relatively hard or relatively difficult depending on our native language and so the ones that i've learned that have been most difficult for me are the ones that i've tried in the most difficult category and that is um, korean first and foremost and arabic uh, not necessarily in the order of difficulty but those are the order that that i learned them uh, let me say i think that again what makes learning a language difficult is how different it is so the more different it is and the more the different ways that it's different that makes it harder so Languages like the Romance languages or the Germanic languages from a native English starting point, those are very close, dramatically, structurally, linguistically. Um, so that's sort of one level of difficulty. And then if you go to a level like Greek or the Slavic languages that are have, have a more their, their, their vocabulary is more different, their structure is different, they have a different script sometimes, that's the level of difficulty, but then they're still in the same big culture, the same European cultural circle. Um, then you have other layers of difficulty, there are languages like um, Swahili and Turkish that are very are different in terms of vocabulary and structure, but they've got a very regular systematic grammar, uh, and they're they're now written in the Latin script. And so, if you want to just get a grounding in those and understanding how they work, maybe even though they're from other civilizations, they're not necessarily so so difficult. There are languages like uh, Hindi and, and Persian that are are Indo-European, so they have some roots, but they're also from different cultures. They use different scripts, so. These are at a, a level of difficulty. Uh, what are generally considered to be the most difficult languages, though, are, are the East Asian languages, uh, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, and also Arabic. Um, and I think actually probably the most difficult level of, of, of a language to learn, I've never tried it, would be um, sort of to go out and do that sort of ethnographic um, uh, documenting an uncharted language, finding a language for which there are no resources, there's nothing to study, you just have to go to the people and extract the language from them, you're responsible for writing it down and getting the grammar and just teaching it to yourself from, from them. I think that would probably be the most difficult, time-consuming thing to, to do, but um, yes, in my experience, I say that uh, Korean and Arabic are the most difficult things that took, took me to do, not that they were like challenging and I was sweating and it was painful and hard to do and I didn't think I would be able to succeed but more that just was it was a real challenge it was you know it was it was it was a consistent yeah it was a consistent um, uh, really you know calling upon my resources and, and rewarding at the same time but uh, I think that languages like that you really have to you know, the, if you, Korean and Arabic are both, they're from totally different civilizations that have totally different etymologies. So the words are totally different. The grammar works on a totally different scale. There's a different writing system that requires you to, 
you know, to, to read in very different ways. And, um, uh, and there's a different culture behind them and just, you know, everything is, is uh, very different. Um, and so I think languages like that, in order to really master them, you need to go there and, and, and live them for a long time. When I was, when I was in Korea, I met a circle of, of, I've always thought of them as older men, although they're probably the age that I am now. Um, they had been living in Korea for many years, uh, used generally married Korean women, become Korean citizens, and for some had gotten there, but they they all concurred that they had to live there for like 15 or 20 years before they felt, you know, that, you know, maybe my Korean is now better than my English if they were Native American speakers or, or, or something like that. So they all said it took a really long time. And I, I I lived those languages, putting most of my energy into them, each of them for a good solid eight years total um, in, in their cultures and those environments. And, um, and I have developed considerable skills and abilities in them, but I'm not, you know, anywhere near as, as all around, you know, comfortable proficient as I, as I, as I will ever be in one of those, like I said, so the category one languages, the other Germanic or romance languages, I could get really good in, in one of those. If I went to a, a culture like that and stayed there and immersed myself in it for, you know, just a br very brief time, I would make this enormous jump and I would, you know, really be able to think everything in it and understand most things. Whereas Korean, Arabic, you get good in, in the kind of things that you read a lot or the kind of you know conversations that you have, but it's just this endless ocean of, of, of other work there. So for the amount of time and the amount of effort and energy that I put into those, um, I'm still finding them to be, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard workout. It's, it's difficult in that sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting that you talk about how it, it really would help your journey in learning a difficult language if you're able to be in the country, immerse yourself. Uh, we have another comment from Phoenix Phoenix Knight that talks a lot about uh, what what are your opinions on creating like an at home bubble, um, uh, an at home form of immersion within your study time, within the media you consume, and doing that for around two to four hours a day. Like, uh, what's your opinions on that? Um. I think that's a great thing to do if you're capable of that. Uh, but as we talked about last time, working up to five hours a day is, uh, you know, is, is a is a big challenge. So, I mean, is it comfortable to just say, oh, could just take four hours a day and create a bubble and do that yourself? So that would require some uh, intensity of purpose, some uh, knowledge of what would really work, some ability to focus on something for four hours. But if a person is capable of that, um, I have no doubt that uh, you can learn an enormous amount. And if you're coming from particularly from zero to to, you know, starting your journey up, you're, you're going to make a great deal of progress if you did that. But nonetheless, even if you did that for a year or two or five years, uh, if you then went and lived and totally immersed yourself in the country, I think that's when you'd notice a huge, you know, a, a jump in your abilities to do that. So, um, yeah, I think you can, you can, yeah, if you can work intensively on something, certainly, uh, but that's sort of as a preliminary to, to going and, and if it's, talking about a very difficult language like this that comes from a different culture that would be preliminary to going there and not sort of, okay, I'm, you know, you know, I'm thinking I don't need to go there because I'm doing this. Um, I think that that would be, I don't know, maybe depends on the person's uh, learning goals and it means I think the thing with these languages is they've got such rich vocabularies and different things on top of it. If we're talking about wanting to have sort of uh, intellectual, um, conversations beyond everyday life. If you want to, if you're saying, I want to have conversations about um, theological and philosophical topics uh, and also read literature, then we need a much wider vocabulary. And so I think that if people are saying, well, I, I, I don't really want to do that. You know, I want to speak to people. I want to be able to you know, travel, go to the country and, and have conversations. And so uh, I think that the it's a known factor that the, the level of, of mastery, and it's a certain, it is a real level of mastery to, you know, to be able to have the conversational level, but it's, you know, the, the particularly the vocabulary, you need much more to, to watch movies or read newspapers, let alone read books or things like that. So um, I think you can get to that level where you could probably, yeah, even probably test quite well on some standardized tests and, and feel like, hey, I'm, I'm pretty advanced and be pretty advanced, but that would be the most wonderful experience you'd have. And so when you finally got to the country, you're like, wow, even though I'm advanced, I can go, wow, advanced so much more. So um, yeah, if, if a person's capable of doing that, do it.